In the immortal words of Britney Spears, oops, I did it again. And by that, I mean I bought more land. I just couldn't resist the price point currently. In this episode, we're going to go through staking out the new plots of land, what's entailed, what the costs are involved, and how to do it. So if this interests you, please stand by. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. If you like this kind of content and would like to see continue seeing it, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to my channel. And for those people that you know that enjoy Splinterlines content, please share my channel with them. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. Now, with that said, it's been quite a while since I've done a video on land. I did a long string of videos uh, leading up to land 1.5 going live. I covered, I think I covered land 1.1 and 1.5 from every different angle I could think of. And then once land 1.5 went live and we got everything staked out and we discussed our, our plans and everything, um, and we got into this rhythm of collecting our uh, assets on a daily or whenever you collect them at least a weekly basis, um, there, there hasn't been really a whole lot to add. Obviously, you can go in once you stake out your land and improve the cards on the land um, and you know improve your totems and, and, and juggle things around a little bit to try to improve it, but it's largely kind of stayed stagnant, okay? Now, uh, flash forward, uh, I haven't bought anything as far as land is concerned for several months. I think the last thing I bought was about a month ago. I upgraded one of my land plots to a rare totem uh, that uh, the rest of them have common totems on it. Um, so, uh, and it's been months and months and months since I bought any kind of land. Now, flash forward to today, uh, with this current situation we're in, we have seen uh, depressed prices on cards, depressed prices on land, people selling out and things of this nature. And we've all discussed this, and this is not supposed to be a downer video, okay? But the flip side to that is that if you are um, interested in splinter lands for the long haul, then you may take the current situation as a buying opportunity, okay? So you may take the current situation with prices for cards being down uh, uh, as an opportunity to go ahead and increase the power of your deck. Or in my case, the prices of land has come have come down, and and I kind of don't like to think about what I've paid for it in the past and things I've put into it in the past. But taking advantage of the current situation and trying to not have that mindset of buying when things are high and not buying when things are low, uh, which is kind of a human condition, right? But either way, uh, I've been watching in uh, the land market lately. And frankly, I've been watching for land plots in the two major regions that I am currently in. However, um, I'm glad to say that the regions I'm currently in, um, the prices have stayed up on those land plots, and there's not a whole lot for sale in those regions. So I've been looking elsewhere, and in my... Um, Saturday morning stand-up live stream, which we have every Saturday at 11.30 Eastern Time, and it runs for about an hour if you want to join us. We discuss all things Splinterlands as well as other things blockchain gaming uh, on the Hive engine, uh, or on Hive blockchain, that is. Um, we were discussing, somebody brought up uh, the prices of land, and I hadn't checked them in a few days, and I went and checked them, and commons were, are pretty much going for about $17 now. Um, I'm largely not interested in commons at this point, although they do have their places, uh, uh, especially for grain production in the whole 2.0 uh, ecosystem. Um, but right now, I was interested in things uh, in plots rarer than in, than commons. So I got looking around and I was checking out. Let's go ahead and pull up the land here. Um, I was checking out the market and I happened to find what I considered a pretty good deal. Okay, so I found some plots and it's easy to remember where they're at because it's in number one, the first region. Um, and I can go to owned and you'll see exactly where they are. Okay, so <clears throat> the reason why I bought them, first of all, the price was about $26 a piece. Each one of them has building in the box. 
Each one of them has unstable totem, and each one of them has a, a production facility on them. One is an SPS mine, and one is a, a, a grain farm, okay? So this in and of itself, um, to me, represented three different, well, four different layers of opportunity or, or value to me, okay? So first of all, the price of the land is pretty low, okay? For rares, $25 I consider still pretty good compared to what we were paying for them just months ago, okay? And then each of those others represents about a 5 to $10 value uh, per package, right? So without going into it uh, in greater detail, these represented a good value to me, and I just really couldn't pass them up, so I grabbed them. Um, I was considering buying more because the same person has some other plots for sale. If you're interested, you can grab them. But with the other costs associated with staking out a piece of property at this point in time, which was my overall plan because I want my property to be up 100%. At this point, these will be my 14th, 13th and 14th plots. My other 12 are up and running and have been since day one. So I do want to get these up and running, and I do know that Land 2.0 has been kind of backburnered at the point this point in time, and we have not heard any news as far as the um, the plans for it. We do know that the grain SPS mark or grain DEC market is coming out uh, upcoming, so that is a great step forward. But as far as everything else with Land, uh, it's still in a, a holding pattern at this point in time. But that's all right. I want to get these two plots up and running and um, get them producing, basically. So with that said, I thought that I would go ahead and take you for a walkthrough in case you're new, in case you just came into the ecosystem and you're looking at Splinterlands land game. This all may be very confusing, so I thought I'd walk you through it. Okay, so initially, when you decide to get into the land game, the first thing you have to do is buy a plot of land. Okay, and the plot of land can be referenced or uh, found right within the market under uh, land. <laughs> I went to the other part, and then you can go to land and go to for sale, and then you can go in the list and you can look at um, each region and see which plots are for sale and for what price. Or an easier way to look at these would be over on Peak Monsters. As you can see, I was looking at the cards on which I will be staking uh, on those properties. Um, but before we jump forward too much, if you go under buy cards and then the land market, you can use, you can sort um, by rarity, you can sort by type of land, and you can sort mostly by price. So you can see what the cheapest thing is now. You can see that the cheapest right now are a bunch of commons going for $17. However, I will one up you right there. Once uh, another good place to look is on monstermarket.io okay now this is recently uh, i was recently turned on to monster market um, by a viewer of my channel and the fact that i like about monster market which i've switched over to buying off of monster market is that you get a percentage of um, of what you buy back okay let me give you an example i bought two properties this morning for roughly fifty dollars it's a little bit over like fifty three dollars and change now if we go over to uh hive engine explorer i will let's see here here we go this is the purchase right here okay so off of that purchase it credited me back 1633 dec directly back to my account okay there was no middle or there was no extra hoops to jump through there was no converting and making a different token and then having to sell the token and convert it to DC, DEC or SPS. It's just direct, basically cash back, DEC back. Okay. So with that said, I will bring up and I will be buying my cards uh, through Monster Market. But you can buy land through Monster Market as well. And I will leave the applicable links in the show notes uh, so you can check them out. Now, you can go into the land tab, like I said, and then you can do the sorting on the left. You can see the same land for sale. It's just a different website that interfaces with Splinterlands, okay? I don't make a profit either way, but I do like the fact that it's feeding me DEC directly back on each purchase, okay? So I did buy my land off of Monster Market this morning, and you can see I got a, uh, that much DEC back. Okay, so with that said, 
The next thing we need is actual DEC to stake on the land. Now, if uh, the DEC that you stake on each land is going to be dependent upon the level of the cards that you intend on staking on the land. Now, I have made it a, uh, a plan to stake maximum level cards on each property, okay? And with that said, for each piece of property, for each plot, you will need 50,000 DEC, okay? So I have two plots, and you'll see that I went ahead and did a little extra homework and pre-did this and fed uh, 100,000 DEC into my account now <clears throat> to be prepared for this. Now, at this point in time, DEC is running a little bit under peg. So the term peg means that um, if everything's going well and DEC is at peg, like they say, then 1,000 DEC equals one US dollar, okay? It's running slightly lower than that. I got 100,000 for roughly $85, okay? So with that said, uh, that's an extra value compared to when I was staking out my land, um, you know, six, eight months ago, okay, whenever it happened, okay? So at that point, I was paying pretty much peg, you know, 98, 99 cents per thousand. So that's one value. Um, and we will also see that the cards that I'm going to buy are also running a little bit cheaper these days uh, due to several different reasons, but um, I'll be able to um, stake out my two properties with the cards that we need um, for a little bit less. So I think that this, if you're in this land game, so to speak, for the long haul, I think now's a good time to, if you haven't staked out land and you, you wanna jump in, go ahead and jump in, get yourself some land, get yourself some cards, get yourself some DEC to stake it out and just stake it out and let it ride and make what you're gonna make off of it. Is this investment advice? Of course not. I always say that, I'm not an investment advisor. Okay, but um, due to the current situation, it's a little bit cheaper to do it than what we paid several months ago. Okay, so what we're going to do is, first of all, both of my properties, let's jump into production. You can see that this is the proper, this is the, the region I'm talking about, Veritas, which is number one, very easy to remember. As you can see, I have two work sites, SPS and Grain, and both of these are rivers, okay? Now, I specifically chose this land type, okay? Because in the future, a river is one of the four land types that will be able to produce grain. Now, does that necessarily mean that I'm going to do that with those? Not necessarily, but it's always good, in my opinion, to have be able to have a fallback plan if the other plans are too expensive because there's a lot of costs that will be involved once 2.0 hits. So I like the idea that if nothing else and I don't have enough DEC or enough money to stake them out to do other things, I can just let them produce grain and go with it. Okay, so that's my idea and the reason why I bought the, these two particular types of uh, land. So with that said, and without digging in too much deeper, um, if you're new, you can reference back into my channel and just search for land, Splinterlands land game. Um, and you will see a ton of videos that are still relevant and still have good information in them because not a whole lot has changed. Now, each type of land has what's called production boosts and elemental synergies. And this, uh, this information together is going to be how you're going to pick the cards that you're going to put on those land plots. So it is in other reference documentation in the white paper. However, you can go right into the land plot you're looking at. Let's look at this land plot right here. We can see that it's a river. We can see the location. We can even see that it's a rare and it's a natural plot. But if you scroll down, you will see they, the production boost. This is a rare land, so it gets a 10% production boost. Now, here's the elemental synergies I was talking about. If I stake water or earth cards on this land, I will get a 10% production boost. We definitely want to go with those cards to get that production boost. And secondly, there's an ele elemental penalty that if you uh, stake fire or dragon cards on this, you would get a minus 50%. So I don't know necessarily why you would ever do that. I mean, even in the situation where I didn't have any uh, water or earth cards to stake on this particular land, I would still have to pay the 50,000 DEC or whatever amount of DEC, depending upon your land uh, or your, your card levels, 
to stake those cards and then to incur uh, a 50% reduction, there's no, I, no way I would pay the DEC to stake um, these cards to be able to get minus 50%. Either way, uh, <laughs> I digress. Um, I want to get the plus 10%, so I'm going to have to choose earth or water cards for this land. Now, each land, uh, let's go in here to manage, has five spots for uh, workers. One, two, three, four, five. You'll see a couple, a few extra spots. You also have to buy uh, power supplies for each land. You have a spot for a title, and you also have a spot for an artifact or a totem. Okay. So if you're keeping track, this is an additional cost. The power core is 5,000 DEC. Uh, at this point in time, if you're buying a new plot of land, it will not have a power core on it. Uh, previously, people with the building in a box got a power core, but those are non-transferable. So if, like in this case, I do have building in a box on this land, which has another thing in it, which will be relevant in land 2.0, but um, the, the guy I bought these off of, uh, the power cores stay with him. So I will have to buy a power core. They're 5,000 DEC per, so that's an extra uh, 10,000. So we're up to, for my two plots of land, up to 10,000 or 110,000 DEC just to get everything up and running. Okay, that's with max level cards staked and then uh, two power cores. Okay, that's just the DEC cost. Okay, so in preparation for staking uh, my cards on these two plots of land, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stake my 100,000 DEC. You should do this first uh, because if you wait until you go stake the cards, then it'll tell you go back and stake the DEC. Okay, so I have 100,000 DEC staked in this region that I can use. Uh, and I, it's not lost. It's not a, it is a cost, but it's not going away. In other words, if you sell off land, uh, you can unstake that DEC and, and recoup it. Okay. But it represents uh, an upfront cost to get your cards up and running. If you don't have enough DEC staked for the cards that you have working the land, you will incur a, pe a penalty every time you go to harvest that, uh, whatever you're making, whether it's, uh, grain or SPS or research. So, okay, so I have the have them staked. I have the proper amount staked. Now, so my goal here is to stake out the grain producing land over and above uh, the production power, the SPS producing land. So I am bringing SPS in, but the grain producing land is staked out a lot better so that it's making enough grain to sustain both plots, okay? Now, if you had three plots, it would be a lot easier to do this, but let's go ahead and dive in. And it's gonna be somewhat of a guessing, a guessing game. Now, I do know that my overall plan has been to use Chaos Legion, mostly common gold foils, maxed out and that's been pretty much what i've staked out there's a few uh offline cards uh, that i bought specifically for specific use cases but uh, i'm going with common gold foil max for the sps land so let's go ahead and jump over and check out what we can find on monster market let's go ahead and refresh i need five cards let's go to the market let's go to gold foil um, remember, once again, water and earth is what we're looking for. We're looking for Chaos Legion, and let's go ahead and select Commons. <clears throat> and this is what we got. Now, the second thing I will say is that we will need, let's reference over here on, let's go ahead and do the same thing over on Peak Monsters as a reference. Okay, so this is one thing that is a little bit better than Monster Market, the way they, they have the bulk buying here. Um, for a max copy uh, of a common, I will need 38 BCX of gold foil. That will make a level 10. So let's go over here and we will look at my Selic Morphoid. So we got uh, 20, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Okay, let's go ahead and purchase that, and it comes out to $6.27 and some change. And 
just double checking everything so we will go ahead and buy in credits okay next thing uh, let's look at Venari Scout do the same thing oh this is gonna be a little bit more difficult these are at 16 cents it's not too much too too much price here um, if that's a word let's go ahead and go two copies of this that's 1259 that will give us three cards buying with credits cruel cethropod we've got a level 10 here let's go ahead and then we need one more so we will go with the hardy stonefish wow this, these are all one bcx um, it's gonna be a bunch of burning 38. Okay, so a bunch of people will get their single copies bought up here so after I bought all buy all these I will have all those for thirteen dollars and a quarter then we will go over to my cards look at gold foil once again do the same sorting water and earth okay so we have the cruel cethropod here um, we have just want to make sure I'm not over combining okay so we will do this combine and we will have a max level hardy stonefish okay so you can see I have two others staked already but this one is ready to go We're looking for mycelic morphoid. I always do it this way just to make sure that I'm not over combining. So there was one extra there. I could have bought one less. Okay, so I have a max level mycelic morphoid and Venari Scout will be the next one. And I have two Venari Scouts ready to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back over to stake out the first land plot. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and get the cards uh, arranged for the grain producing land. I don't want to stake out the SPS land before the grain producing land because then there ultimately uh, would not, there would be a greater disparity. Uh, say for instance, I don't know if 10 or 15 minutes would make a difference, but I'd rather have a little bit more grain going first than, uh, than kicking in the SPS production first. So. Let's go ahead and go over and uh, what my plan is for the grain producing land is going to be go with rare, at least two of the cards are going to be rare gold foil maxes. Uh, hopefully that extra percentage uh, will work out uh, and I will report back if it doesn't, if I have to do some slight adjustments. So if we go over to uh, Monster Market, I've already sorted, same sorting except for now we're using rares. Uh, instead of uh, commons and we can see that let's see here 75 cents 92 cents um, now on these you need um, 22 BCX and the max level is a level 8 
So let's go in and see price ascending by BCX. Okay, so the cheapest is going to be Mycelic Inventory, and we need a level 8, which is 22. Okay, so if we buy that one, this one, this one, and this one, this will give me enough for two max level Mycelic Inventories, and that is going to run $35. make sure I got enough I do okay so that fills two spots let's go ahead and jump over here and just make sure they're combined switch to rare my Celic infantry we've got this one And then we've got these. Okay. So now uh, I need three of the commons. I'm 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 really hoping that this will be. Okay. Now that I think about it, um, considering I do have a common totem, I'm going to put on the food producing land uh, to give an extra ten percent boost. I think I'm going to stick a third rare gold foil uh, on this property, and then the other two are going to be two common gold foils um, at max level. Uh, and I'm hoping that the, having the three rares plus the 10% with the totem is going to offset enough and give a production boost enough to give enough food for both properties. So cross my fingers, and we'll see how it works out. Either way, I need to buy one more uh, rare. Uh, so we'll go in. I already sorted. We need 22 BCX. We've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, so that's uh, $16.5. $16.5. So we will go ahead and those will be in there. Let's go ahead and sort by common again. And we've got... Venari Scout is still the cheapest. And okay, so we need 38 BCX of the Venari Scout. So here we go, 38 BCX. Let's go ahead and buy that. That is $6.27. And that will make my fourth card. So I need one more common. Let's go ahead and refresh, just make sure we're getting the most current prices. We need gold foil. We need earth and water. Common. Okay. And sort by... Ascending BCX. So we can do another one at 38 BCX. Okay. And that's another $6.67. Slightly more expensive. Okay, so now we can go over and check our cards once again. Venari Scout. We've got two max levels here. Okay. Once again, I always do this just to make sure I'm not over combining wasting cards. Okay, that gives us another max level to stake out. Uh, there's 20. Okay.
Now we'll come over here and um, I've already got the mycelic inventory combined. Uh, I do have to do the goblin tower. So select all and then combine them. And I should be set. Okay, so let's go over back to land, go into production, go to this, and then we will go to the grain producing land first. And we will go to manage. And I will, first of all, have to buy a power core. Let's go ahead and just uh, let's buy one. Uh, I think you can buy two at a time. Buy two power cores, which I will need. Okay, I successfully purchased two power cores. Let's go ahead and add a power core, add power core here, okay, with this slider button. And then we're also going to add um, this common totem. And then we're going to add our cards. We're going to add the Goblin Tower. And we're going to add my Celic Inventory. Two of those. And then the other two are going to be commons. So we'll just go ahead and add a Venari Scout and a Cruel Sethropod. And that looks good. And we'll see that I'm getting a 20% uh, boost on this land. It will have a little bit over 21,000 production points. And it will give uh, 422 grain per hour. So I'll go ahead and save the changes and confirm. Get that up and running. Okay, now we will go over to the SPS site and we will basically do the same thing. We'll go ahead and add power core. I'm not putting a totem on this one. We'll go ahead and choose our cards which should be a mycelic morphoid, gold foil. I'm just double checking everything. A Venari Scout Gold Foil times two more. And last but not least, the Hardy Stonefish. Yep, numbers look good. I don't have a title to put on it. I don't have a totem for this one. So we will see that this one has 12,100 production and produces 0.24 SPS per hour. So we will save changes there and confirm. And we will see how it looks once everything will go back to this main screen. So uh, looks like I guess pretty good. Uh, the grain uh, required per hour for these two plots is 260 and I'm actually producing uh, 380. So I'm doing over and above. Uh, so I guess pretty good even though it, initially, I was only going to put two rare gold foils on that land. I would have rather just go ahead and bite the bullet and do the three rare gold foils than have to come back and, you know, redo things. So either way, uh, we are up and running. So as you can see, uh, they've already kicked off and they're starting to produce. And we will go back to the overview screen and you can see that I have now 16 plots of land up and running and I'm getting to the point in the day where I will be harvesting my other ones, but that's not part of this this uh, video. So if you were wondering, uh, you know, about a big picture of what was all entailed in staking out land, buying buying it currently, 
there you go. Many different costs are involved. Uh, buying the land is just the first part of it. There are many different variables. You don't have to do it exactly like I did it, but uh, the, the process, the way I did it, is, is pretty much how you have to do it. But the cards you put on it and, you know, the, the, the totems and if you put a Rooney on it and different things like that, those are all variables. So either way, leave in the comments what you think. If you have any questions, if you're new to the game and you want to uh, want some pointers, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. Hey, remember to leave a like and subscribe. See you on the flip side. Thank you.